Guys, look, I know that you've watched plenty of people swirl wine, sip wine, taste wine, drink wine, and at the end of the day, some of you just want to know, is there any point to this stuff? Well, today, actually, I'm going to show you that there is a point to all of these things if you know what you're looking for. Otherwise, it's just totally a show. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to taste wine. Los Gates. Hi guys, it's Baron Belts, the wine missionary. I'm really excited about today for a number of reasons, but first and foremost, I'm excited just to answer a bunch of your questions when it comes to how do you taste wine? So we've seen all these people, they're looking at the wine, they're swirling the wine, they're smelling the wine, they're doing all these different things, right? And so today I'm going to answer your questions about why do people do these things? And I'm going to show you there is actually a point to all of these things, some to some degree and others less, I would say. Um, but man, let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm also excited about the fact that I have three wines from Switzerland. So after 30 years of drinking wine, I... I had never had a wine from Switzerland before. So I'm using these wines for a reason because I've never tasted wines from Switzerland and I'm gonna help show you like how to taste wine because I will be thinking about these wines as new wines. I've never had them before. Uh, so please join me for my first time to taste Swiss wines while I talk and teach and answer questions about how to taste wine. So let's get started. The first one is called Halauer. That's the name of the winery. It comes from an area called Schaffhausen uh, in Switzerland. And what the Swiss call this wine is Riesling Silvaner. So that's the name of two different grapes, Riesling Silvaner. But the interesting thing is, not to get technical, in Germany, this is called Müller Turgau, which is actually the second most widely planted grape in all of Germany. So a little bit of history trivia for you guys. Do you remember the stuff that was called Liefermilch? Do you remember this stuff back in the 80s and early 90s? Also this thing called Peace Porter. Do you remember seeing these things? So the funny thing is Müller Turgau is actually the name of that grape, but Liefermilch, as a lot of people would call it, so Lieb is lovely or beloved, Frau is a woman, and Milch is milk. So beloved woman milk. I don't know how in the world you come up with that for the name of a wine in Germany, Lieb from Milch. Uh, but anyway, the grape is Müller Turgau. So yeah, file that one away. Okay, so that's what we'll be tasting first. So it's a screw cap. You guys can watch my uh, video about how to open a screw cap, but the easiest way, take your hand, place it over the whole capsule, and then turn the bottle. Makes it so easy. Cap comes right off. So pouring this Müller Turgau from Switzerland. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is, it's gonna be a bunch of S's, but just hang in there with me. The first thing I'm gonna do is survey. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the wine. I just want to make sure there's nothing floating in there or anything weird like that. Next thing I want to do is put it up against a white background. So what you'll notice here is I actually have a white piece of paper. And because I have good light behind me, I am just holding my glass literally over the white piece of paper. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm actually looking at the color of the wine. You may be thinking, what does this have to do with tasting the wine? Hang in there, I'm gonna show you. There's a reason why people do this and they actually look at the wine. I already mentioned one of the first reasons. The other reason is because you're also looking to see, could this wine have been aged? Is it uh, a little bit older? Is it younger? Um, these are the kinds of things you're looking at. So you're looking at the color, like with this one. It's a very bright, almost like uh, gold shavings, gold leaf, just super bright. 
but it's very, very pale. Um, and then you're looking like for the hue, right? Is it bright? Is it dull? Um, looking for aging signs. So with white wines, an aging sign would be sometimes that it's got just a little bit darker center to the wine. Um, it's not quite as pretty or lovely looking. That doesn't mean it's bad. It could just mean that it's a little older. With red wines, what you'll find is that you'll have a true color center. So that could be blood red, it could be garnet, these things. But towards the outside, you may see more colors like orange or rust. Those could also be signs of aging. But yeah, don't want to get too technical about that. But that's why you're actually looking at the wine. You're what I call surveying the wine. The next one is the first swirl. So you'll see some people swirl like this. And then they're going to look at the glass. And you're thinking to yourself, what are they doing? Like, what's the point of that? Like, aren't we just supposed to drink the stuff? We're going to get there, I promise you, okay? But what people are doing with this is they are looking for the legs of the wine. So in other words, at whatever level you just swirl the wine, from that level you will begin to see that this wine will begin to cascade down. Sometimes, or with most wines, you, what you will see is what kind of look like legs beginning to flow. So the slower that a wine does that, typically it would mean it may be a higher alcohol. It could have to do with viscosity too, like how rich and thick is this wine? But here in this case, this wine is only 12.1% alcohol. So man, there really are no legs at all. In other words, it's just going to be a very light and clean sort of wine. So that's the first reason you swirl and why people look at the glass. Now, the next thing that you're going to ask is, okay, why do you swirl the glass and then smell it? Like, what is the point of that? Is it just to look fancy? No, there's actually a reason for it. So the reason that you're swirling the glass is because the more um, area that you're able to get the wine over, the more aromatics are able to come through from this, right? So if all I did was to take something that was this big and I'm trying to smell it like this versus if I were to crush it and slam it like this and then smell, you can see how that surface area helps. So there's another thing that's happening here too. What you're releasing is aromatics inside the wine. My point is, if you had been shoved in a bottle for two years, wouldn't you want a fresh breath of air too? That's what we're doing as well. We're helping to aerate the wine, get a little bit of oxygen in there, wake it up a little bit, get these aromatics flowing. All right. So the next thing that's happening is you're actually helping to make kind of a, a cone of sorts. So it's like this little bowl that you're creating with the aromatics. So I can already smell it from here. This smells really lovely, actually. But what you're going to do is stick your nose, your schnoz, all the way inside the glass and then smell, sniff. Mmm, yeah. Very lovely, delightful. It's very light. Uh, it's kind of floral, like white flowers. Um, I also get a little bit of, a little bit of pear, maybe a little bit of peach as well. Okay, so you see what I'm doing. There's a reason that I'm sniffing this is because I'm already putting into my mind, man, these are some things that I'm smelling here. The reason for this is the same thing with food. The chef wants to bring out the plate when it's gotten cold. No, wants to bring it out when it's still hot, still really warm. Why is that? It's because the aromas are lifting from the plate as you see the steam and things. That is that aromatic that happens there. It's getting into your whole olfactory system back here, right? So as you smell the wine, that's exactly what you're doing. And I kind of, a little bit, because it just kind of wakes up my nose. Yeah, so it smells really light and refreshing as well. And that's the reason why you're swirling and sniffing. All right, so the next S that I'm gonna tell you about is to, to taste, to sample, right? Yeah, so let's sample.
Mm. Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate first, and now I'm going to walk back to what I just did and why. All right, first thing I did before I actually sipped the wine that last time was I smelled it again. The reason I do that is because I want to get that olfactory woken up again right before I sample the wine. So I like to call it a swig. So it's just like the way I picture it is if you took your tongue and you put it up against the roof of your mouth but then cupped it down like that, I want to take just enough to fill that space. You don't want so much that you're, you know, having to do the chipmunk thing, but you want enough in your mouth um, so that you can get all of the flavors going around. The next thing that you're doing is you're swishing. Now again, if you're just sitting at the dinner table with people, it's probably not so polite to be making all these noises. That's what I do. But anyway, the whole idea here is get it back into your nose, put enough in your mouth, move it around your mouth. So literally like get it all over your teeth and all over your gums, on the roof of your mouth, underneath your tongue, towards the back, get it everywhere that you can. One of the ways you're doing is not only some light swishing, but there's also what I would call slurping. So this idea of getting a little bit of air coming into your mouth at the same time. Why do you do this? I'm glad you asked. Why do people do this breathing air over the wine? The reason is because it helps to actually get this, what's called retronasal cavity that's literally connected. So you've done the aromatic thing with the nasal cavity. Now you've got this retro and what that's doing is actually helping to put these two things together. It really wakes up your sensory um, to, to not only taste what you're smelling, but to also smell what you're tasting. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. Wine just happens to be one of those interesting things where this works, all right? So the very next thing is, are you going to spit or swallow? Because I'm actually doing a tasting here. I'm not drinking or sitting down to dinner. Uh, I'm not drinking, I'm just tasting, I'm sampling this. So let's go over the S's one more time. The first thing is to survey, right? Looking at your glass. The next thing is to swirl and look at the legs. You wouldn't do this every time when you're having a glass of wine, you just do it at first, right? The next one is to swirl and then sniff, like I mentioned, right? The next thing would be to swirl Sniff one more time and then take a swig. Put it in your mouth, swish it around. And like I said, slurp a little bit, get a little bit of air going over that wine, right? And then you're gonna figure out, am I going to actually drink this or am I going to get rid of it depending on the sort of scenario that you're in, all right? Super easy, guys. There is a reason for each of these steps. But the last one and what I think is the most important is the last S, to size it up. In other words, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you not like it? If you don't like it, don't drink it. Just, just say you like something else, right? Although that could be rude, I guess, if someone opens something expensive, but that's not the idea. The idea is, I always tell people this, drink what you like. Don't let other people tell you what you should drink or you shouldn't drink when it comes to wine. Even food pairings, people want to tell you what you should and you shouldn't do. Look, there are great ideas out there, but when it comes right down to it, man, drink what you enjoy. Um, I always tell people this. It seems like people need permission for this. So really cool wine, very light body. It's not rich at all. Very easy going finish. This would really be a great summertime wine with some friends that, well, you don't know if they like wine or not, or or maybe they're just kind of novice wine drinkers. This is perfect because it's just so super easy going. All right, the next one. This one will be sped up because now I'm just walking you through each of these steps really quickly. But now you know there's a reason why we do these things. All right, so the next one, this is also from Switzerland as I mentioned a moment ago. This is called Dole. So that's the name of the, the wine, okay? But the actual name of the grape is two different grape varieties. So one of them is Pinot Noir, and the other one is called Gamay. So Pinot Noir, very popular in France, uh, comes from an area called 
uh, Burgundy, and then there's lots of Pinot Noir in other areas as well. And then there's another grape called Gamay. So this is a blend. I've never had a blend of Pinot Noir and Gamay, so I'm actually pretty excited about it. Once again, I'm gonna grab the bottle here. I'm gonna grab the whole capsule here and twist the bottle. So super easy, you guys. All right, so pour some. Yeah, wow, so right off the bat, what I'm noticing is the color. So again, I'm going to look at gonna look at the wine, make sure there's nothing floating in there or something wrong, right? Just taking a quick survey. Next thing I wanna do is actually look at the color of the wine. So I can tell you right off the bat, the color is a little bit more, it's not quite as bright as obviously like this white wine, but when it comes to red wines, it's a little more subtle. I wouldn't call it dull, but uh, it's a little bit more subtle kind of has a little bit of a, a, a velvet color, uh, which is really pretty, um, but it's kind of a dull, dull red. So anyway, very clear. You can see straight through it. Um, these are the kinds of things I'm looking for, right? So the swirl, right? I just want to look at the legs. Yeah, and here once again, the legs are going really fast. So that tells me most likely it's a lower alcohol wine. And like I said, I only do this the first time I'm tasting the wine. When I'm just enjoying it with dinner and these things, I'm not taking all these steps. Then I'm just enjoying it with the dinner, right? So the alcohol percentage, so it's only 13%, so relatively low, all right? So the next one is to swirl and then sniff. Wow. So again, sometimes you're smelling fruit. And the idea here is just thinking of what is similar to you. So in other words, what's familiar? What are some things that, that you've tasted and smelled? What does it remind you of? You don't have to be a pro to figure that out. You just stick your nose in there and you say, this is what this reminds me of, which I've done many times, right? Yeah, so what this reminds me of is like, uh, is like red roses, like ro uh, red rose petals. That's really what it smells like. It's very interesting, very pretty. If you smelled it, hopefully that's what you would smell. Okay, that last sniff, and then I'm going to swig. Kind of like to let it finish for a moment because I like all the sensations to kind of work. So yeah, interesting wine. Um, definitely has like some, some little notes of like a sour red cherry uh, is what I would call that fruit component. Uh, it's, de it's definitely a light bodied wine as well, maybe light to medium body. And when I talk about body, really what I'm talking about here is like milk. So in other words, you have skim milk, and you have 2% milk and you have whole milk, right? So that's kind of that body, right? Light body, medium body, and then full body. Definitely light, maybe light to medium body here. Um, the finish is really fast, so it really doesn't stick around long, just like the uh, Mueller Turgau that we had a moment ago. Uh, very quick and easy finish. Um, very easy going red wine. So like I said, it's a blend of Pinot Noir and Gamay. Um, yeah, it's good. It's just uh, kind of a generic red wine, but it tastes good. So there you go. Now what I'm doing is I'm sizing it up, right? Do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I think it's worth the money? These sorts of things. So there is the Le Romance Dole. And the next one is another wine from Hallauer, which is the same winery as this. This is called Blauburgunder. All right. So Blauburgunder in Switzerland is actually their own name for Pinot Noir. Very interesting. So the Germans have their own name for Pinot Noir, Spätburgunder. And here in Switzerland, they call it Blauburgunder. So literally that means Blau, blue, and Burgunder, Burgundy. This Pinot Noir grape from France just happens to come from that region called Burgundy. That's the reason this is called Blau Burgunder. Um, the grape has a little kind of a shade or hue of blue when it's on the vine. 
Very pretty uh, is the Pinot Noir grape. So here it is, Hallauer Blau Burgunder 2018. So again, you're gonna grab the capsule and the bottle, turn the bottle, super easy. Go ahead and pour it. Yeah, so I can tell right off the bat, just after pouring it, this one is much brighter in color. Uh, so I'm just gonna survey a little bit, make sure everything's uh, in order there. All right, now I'm gonna look at it. Wow, so this is really pretty, you guys. This is like, um, wow, it's gorgeous. Okay, so when it comes to the color of this wine, I would definitely say it's a, a bright uh, style of light red. Um, and it has like these kind of garnet, ruby garnet uh, highlights around the wine. So one of the things that I would guess because of this is that it's a pretty fresh, a pretty recent um, bottling, 2018. So yeah, definitely, definitely recent. So very pretty, right? So also looking here, just gonna swirl, check out the legs. Yeah, so again, relatively quick. Um, yeah, which tells me the alcohol is going to be relatively low. Yeah. Now I'm gonna sniff. Oh, wow. Yeah, so bright. This is like, uh, this reminds me of like um, uh, fresh wild strawberries. Like don't think crushed or like chewing it or anything, but like if you had a whole handful of those tiny little strawberries, right? Like from the wild ones from the wood and you just kind of stuck your nose in there. This is what this reminds me of. It's so beautiful. Wow, so, uh, so aromatic. All right, so then we'll do that and then sniff it again and then take a swig. Yeah, so as Pinot Noir goes, this is definitely on the lighter side. Uh, I would really call this like fresh and fragrant and more fruit forward. Wow, that was alliteration, that was pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, so um, it's very easy going style of Pinot Noir. Uh, it's not heavy, it's not rich, uh, it's not like super ripe flavors as well. Uh, it really is more like fresh strawberries, uh, maybe just a little bit of like fresh red cherry as well. Um, just kind of letting it finish here. Once again, I would say this is like a light to medium bodied wine. It's not rich or cloying at all, um, but it's very easy going, very easy to drink, which is what I found with all three of these wines from Switzerland. So there I am, I'm sizing it up, right? So guys, I hope this has been helpful. Like there is a reason for each of those steps that people take when they're kind of analyzing a wine, when they're tasting a wine. But again, like I said, I really only do these things the first time, like at the very beginning when I'm tasting a wine. After that, I just wanna enjoy it. I just wanna sip it and taste it and look at it and just enjoy conversation. So guys, I hope this has been helpful. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would love to hear your comments. Like, Baron, what about this? Like your questions, right? When it comes to tasting wine, why is it that some people do this? Maybe I missed something. Please let me know. Um, and then if you like this video, please subscribe. We have lots of other videos talking about how to open a bottle of wine, how to preserve a bottle of wine. Uh, you can find all of those um, as links below. So, hey guys, with that, I've really enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed it with me. And with that, I'll say, cheers.